Hi everybody, my name is Tony Jaws. Welcome to Blend That Film. Welcome to Blend That Film, my humble attempt to teach you how to use the free open source software Blender to produce some professional looking special effects for your DIY films. Now today's episode we're going to be talking about green screens. Ah, green screening. I love green screening because in theory it means you can do anything you want. It's, it's just, it's brilliant. It's, 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 it makes uh, low budget filmmaking into something more Hollywood at the end of the day. If you've got the time and the patience and the skill, you can turn out some amazing looking shots. Now, this is also a subject that a lot of people out there ask me to cover, and so I'm, I'm really happy to cover it. Uh, but two things. First, this is not a video on how to set up a green screen and to light it, etc. There's so much information out there on the internet. You can go and find that all on YouTube, literally just type in green screen setup, lighting, anything along those lines. You're going to find so much information on how to do that. We're looking specifically how to do it inside a blender. So once you've got your footage shot at the best quality settings you can and using the best lighting you can from watching those videos, then we can go about going into Blender and setting up a good key and producing some great effects. So let's take a look at that side of things. So these shots were filmed at 720p. Now shooting at 720p was a personal choice I took when I started Blend that film. In the beginning I wasn't really sure how well Blender would handle 1080p footage, but it continues to impress me so in the future I'm going to start shooting at 1080p because this was going to be more detail around the edges when filming green screen elements. First up, we follow the golden rule of ensuring that our render settings are set to the same as our source footage, especially in terms of frame rate. At the default layout, switch them to the node editor and turn on Use Nodes. Delete the Render Layers node and then load in your footage using an Image Input node, setting the frames value to the amount of the length of your clip. Add a viewer node to your scene, then by splitting the area, add the UV Image Editor window and choose the viewer node. This will allow you to see the result of your compositing and in my opinion, this method works much better than using the background setting. Now your first inclination might be to jump straight into the matte nodes list and choose a chroma key node, but I've found that the chroma key node is one of the weaker options for keying. First, I'm going to use a channel key node. Connect it to the viewer node, and I'm going to set the view mode to draw RGB and alpha channels. Set the algorithm to single, then play with the settings to get rid of as much green as possible. Switching between the RGBA and alpha only view modes will allow you to see the changes and help you to tweak the final result. Basically if you're looking in the alpha only mode you want to see a nice black and white image with no grey areas. At this point it's a good idea to add a background so that we can start to work towards the key looking right for our scene. Add a second image input node and choose your background. Then set the number of the frames to match the clip length and combine this with your current scene using an alpha over node. Finally connect this to the viewer node. If you turn on convert pre-multiplied this will smooth the result a little. So as you can see this isn't a bad starting point. A lot of the green is already gone. Now we just need to work towards getting rid of these jagged edges. Looking at the node chain you'd be forgiven for thinking that we would be adding more nodes between the channel key node and the alpha over node. But the method I like to use is to do the keying separate. So I'm going to pipe the main footage into the alpha over node and the result ends up looking like it did when we started out. Adding a new viewer node to the channel key will allow us to see the keying separately. Between the main footage and the channel key, add a filter node and set this to soften. As you can see, it has made the green outline much smoother. Doing this is kind of like using the pre-blur setting on After Effects' Keylight plugin if you're familiar with that at all. Now pipe the channel key's matte output into the fact value of the alpha over node and you can see that we have a similar result to what we had earlier but the green outline is much smoother. Now we're going to take care of some of the green hue on our footage and we're going to do this by adding a colour spill node. I'm going to put this between the main footage and the alpha over node. This is found under the matte nodes list. Now make sure that it's set to simple and turn on unspill and then set the green value to 1. Next we go back to our key and add a dilate erode node between the channel key and the alpha over node. I'm going to set this value to minus 1. This will choke back the edges of the image. Moving quickly on, 
we'll add a blur node and we'll set this to feather the edges back out to a soft finish by setting the amount of pixels to the amount that we want to blur it by. A couple of pixels is probably about all we need to do in this instance. Changing the type of blur to quadratic was the best result for my scene, but you may choose other blur types based on what looks right for your scene. Finally, we can add the RGB curves node to fine tune the brightness of the edge. As you can see, it's subtle, but it helps take the brightness off a bit. So taking a look at the node chain in full, you can see how we use a version of the footage to create a soft edged mat, and then use this value to overlay the footage onto the background. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up the node chain by selecting all the nodes that make up the key and group them by hitting Ctrl G. Hitting Tab will toggle between the group being open and closed and you can continue to add nodes inside this group. And that's about it really. Now there are many other ways you can go about keying your footage but this is the best method I've found today. So taking a look at the final result you can see that despite being shot at 720p and the fact that I'm out of focus in the background, we still get a very nice edge to our key. Now bear in mind that this year we're going to have the Mango Open Movie project and it's going to be involving a lot of digital elements being integrated with live action footage and this is going to mean that there's going to be a lot of development within Blender and I'm sure that the green screen side of things is going to have a heavy overall. So inevitably in the future we're probably going to have to revisit this subject but personally I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching again. Now, as I said earlier in the episode, uh, green screening is twofold. It's software and it's setup. And in another video, I'm actually going to take a look at my setup that I use uh, on the show and also on some of the effects that I used in this show. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.